My name is Mahalia Miller and I'm a PhD student at Stanford University in Civil and Environmental Engineering and Computer Science. My research focuses on understanding the likelihood of travel disruptions due to natural disasters. Today I want to share with you my latest work looking at which communities, which socioeconomic groups are particularly at risk from earthquakes. So for example, in the Bay Area, which, which is my home area, what would happen if the Golden Gate Bridge is knocked down because of an earthquake? So what would happen to the commute time for people living up here? Or would they start taking the ferry or what would happen? Or more specifically, what if little overpasses go out in, in an earthquake? So there's um, impassable bridges all along the 101, which is a major route for commuters. Who would be affected and how much would they be affected? Thinking beyond an individual region, natural disasters can have global repercussions. So for example, we think back to the 2011 flooding in Thailand that inundated many factories. We saw that the hard drives, for example, that might have been on the supply chain to components in Japan were completely wiped out and disrupted, or for some other computers in the US. So how might risk assessment help? For one, it can help us allocate resources for new infrastructure or for retrofitting. So for example, Novato, as we show, has a particularly high risk of being affected by earthquakes because of the lack of redundant routes coming in there. In other words, they just have a few highways, and if any bridges along there go out, they would be severely impacted. So we might think about adding um, a new route um, when we construct new roads there, so that way that they would reduce their risk. But we also can think, so traditionally, risk assessments focused on the weakest bridges. So for example, if there's a very weak bridge close to San Andreas Fault on a back road up in these mountains, that might be have a high risk, but it wouldn't impact that many people. Whereas, for example, an overpass on 101 might have a little less risk, but have a really important um, role in the travel of the, of the region. So risk assessment can help not only for understanding where to build new bridges, but also for pricing insurance. So for example, the FedEx distribution center for the region is near here, and there, it is affected by various faults. So for example, the Hayward fault goes along here, the San Andreas fault goes along here, and both could have an impact on both the distribution into the center, say from airports or ports, um, as well as the distribution out to, to various parts of supply chains for local businesses, industry, as well as individuals. And so the question is, when, when these routes go out, what sort of disruption will that have for their business? Mm -hmm. Risk is how hazard acts on vulnerability through exposure. So what's this all mean? So hazard, that's understanding what's the likelihood of different natural disasters, what's their intensity, and for earthquakes, for example, we have probabilistic models of the ground shaking intensity. Then we think about vulnerability. We're thinking about the road and transit networks, and we found that bridges are actually a really weak point of, those, of the network. So we have probabilistic models to understand the structural capacity of the bridges and understand at what level of shaking might they um, be impassable. Then we think about exposure, and that's really a key point of this research. So it's understanding where are the different social and economic groups in the region, and basically who would be affected if this natural disaster were to strike. We bring this all together, and that gets our final answer, which is risk. So what, what could happen, and what's the likelihood of it? So how is risk analysis done? So one way to do it is a scenario analysis, or what if. So what if an earthquake happens, then what would be the impact? Another way to do it is with a stochastic set of these scenarios. So we generate lots of earthquakes, then we generate from those, we see what the damage would be to the network, and then we understand something about the network. So because of computational expense, it's very common in the literature to do connectivity as a way of assessing network performance. So for example, there's a hospital here, and then there's like some start origin here, then we have a super simple network that maybe has three or four links. And then the idea is, what is the probability of disconnection between the start and the end node? So in this scenario, we can see that this link would be out, this link would be out, maybe because of this, this link would be out, but we still have one passable route. So 
So what we're doing is we're going from earthquakes, so simulating a stochastic set of earthquake maps, and then we're thinking about the damage in all those cases, then thinking about the networks. But not just a simple measure like connectivity, but really understanding to the best of our abilities what happens to where people actually go. So the way we do this um, and are able to handle this larger graph and larger set of scenarios are by two methods. So first, we think about more efficient implementations of algorithms. So we're thinking about Dijkstra's shortest path to really model how people iteratively might get to their final destination. So for example, somebody's at Stanford trying to get to Berkeley. Initially, everyone might take 101, then go over the Bay Bridge. Then as that starts getting more crowded, some people might start to take the Dumbarton Bridge and go up the East Bay. But what if we have an earthquake and that actually took out the Bay Bridge and maybe even took out the Dumbarton Bridge? So our model handles the mode choice that then maybe those people might actually take a ferry across um, or they might go all the way around the bay. And so this is, adds more complexity to the model but really provides a better idea of how people move. The issue is if we use this last approach, so instead of using the shortest pass, which is relatively efficient, but instead we understand mode choice and really how people move, that requires an agent-based travel model. And the issue with that is it's relatively slow. So what we do is we use machine learning to classify loss and thus be able to extrapolate from the limited data to have a richer data source. So using this approach, we can look at the likelihood of travel disruptions in the San Francisco Bay Area due to earthquakes. So we see here the loss exceedance curves um, considering two performance metrics. So percentage of bridges damaged, so that's the portfolio of bridges, and we also have percent increase in commute time, which is related to travel disruption. And what we're measuring here is the annual rate of exceedance. So that's measuring the likelihood. And using the approach the, that we've just discussed, we can then understand what the um, likelihoods are, and we can determine if that's an acceptable level of risk or not. So the agent-based travel model allows us to dig a little deeper and understand which communities in the Bay Area, as well as which social economic groups would be most at risk. So for example, we found that the Nevada area actually has very few bridges going into it, and thus um, is particularly at risk compared to some other areas, such as Palo Alto, that might have more redundant routes and alternatives. We can also understand which bridge retrofits, for example, a bridge here versus something up here in the mountains, how that might affect different social economic groups. So using the analysis results where we have an understanding of which communities and which social economic groups are particularly at risk, we can then design a retrofit strategy, so prioritizing which bridges to retrofit or actually where to build new bridges or roads. And then the goal of that is to reduce the risk. And so we can assess that region-wide or at a community level. So here we have region-wide, and the goal is really just to reduce the likelihood of these different levels of travel disruption so we get a new level of risk that is less. So this methodology has broad impacts. So we've talked about how we can do that at single sites, such as bridges, or for a network, such as the bridge network that we talked about. We can also think about that in terms of supply chains and with other factors going outside of an individual region. And this doesn't have to just be limited to earthquakes. You can think about this in hurricanes or flooding. For example, flooding could take out different parts of the network, and we could see then what the travel disruptions would be. Or it could just be your one-of-the-mill snowstorm in the Midwest. So in summary, we showed methods to assess the likelihood of travel disruptions. We also used efficient implementation of network algorithms to do the model quickly. And then we used machine learning to, be, to further extrapolate from this data. We also identified communities and socioeconomic groups particularly at risk from earthquakes in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I call on you to consider thinking of your risk problem in more of a system perspective and think about how computer science advances can enable your analysis. So if you have any questions, please email me at mahalia at stanford.edu or mahalia at alum.mit.edu. I'd like to thank my advisor, Professor Jack Baker at Stanford in my funding agencies, the Stanford Graduate Fellowship and the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program. Thanks.